There's been a lot of debate over what the Affordable Care Act would mean for business, especially small businesses. That was the subject of a webinar hosted today by the New Jersey Hispanic Chamber of Commerce. And joining us now is the group's chairman, Carlos Medina. We welcome you back to the program. Th tell me about, about what you're hearing from, from the member businesses about where things stand. Sure, there's a lot of confusion among businesses. Does the Affordable Health Care Act apply to us? Is there any mandate that applies to us? So we teamed with Small Business Majority to do the webinar today to educate and tell them about the options that are out there. Are, are, are they buying into the plan? Do they, is there a sense of, of this being an opportunity for more, more businesses or a lot of the concerns that existed before this that would complicate their lives and make things more expensive? Is that there? Some of the concerns are still there, but I think the more we do webinars and do education and tell them, look, this is a marketplace, it's a good thing. Um, the mandate doesn't kick in unless you're over 50 employees. So it really just gives your employees a choice. So we, we try to put a positive spin on it because it is a good thing for them. They can offer plans where they didn't have to bundle or be a large company. So now they have an option to offer their employees this benefit. Is this entire process, is this something that, that ultimately people think will be uh, a benefit to the business, a benefit to the bottom line, or is it right now a distraction to the business of going out and, and just making money? I think if you asked me six months ago, it was a distraction, but I think more and more businesses are seeing that it is a value that they could add to their employee benefit plan. Mm -hmm. I mean, when you're fighting for competition for good employees, offering a, a, a suite of benefits is an attraction to them. So you're going to be able to lure better talent to your firm. What are you hearing overall in terms of business these days? Where has, has the economic recovery we hear so much about, has it filtered down to the, uh, to the grassroots level? Yeah, there's more and more companies starting small businesses, and a recent study shows that Hispanic entrepreneurs are starting them at a much greater rate than the general population. So it, it, there's a good energy with our chamber and our membership right well, now. Why is that? Why, why would the Hispanic portion of our community be more entrepreneurial in some respects? I think it, there is a spirit of entrepreneur entrepreneurship with our members, but also some of them are underemployed. So if they're a doctor in their native country and they come here and they're working at a restaurant, they may feel it's a better opportunity to start a business, become an entrepreneur than be underemployed. From the t You've been in, in office now for about, what, a, a year? Two years. Two years. July, wow. yes. Over the two-year period since we had our first conversation, what's the biggest difference between now and then? Um, I think the economy's turning. Uh, I see more, even in my personal business, I see more projects hitting the street. I see more people investigating, whether it be raw land, property, a lot of calls for people wanting to start businesses. We even are launching an academy, a 12-week program to teach entrepreneurs how to start a business and try to help existing businesses grow. What's the most important thing you try to impart to them? Um, relationships. Everything is about relationships. You know, don't knock on somebody's door when you need them. Have that relationship already foster it, let it grow. That way, when you need to work with that individual, they're going to be there and they're going to be there willing. The, uh, we often hear that the ability of an entrepreneur to, to create something is heavily contingent upon, obviously, the ability to raise the money yes. to get the thing going. In terms of access to credit nowadays, what's it like in general, and particularly for the Hispanic community, what's it like? I work with a couple nonprofits that are micro lenders, and they also help build your credit. One is the Intersect Fund. So we're helping, you know, if a restaurant needs his first shipment of food, it could be a loan as small as $5,000. And by establishing that credit, the goal of these small nonprofits is to get them to a bank. It's not to have them as a lifelong customer, have them for a year, have them for two years, and then bring them to a mainstream bank where the rates will be more attractive and they'll be able to. We all, I'm sorry to sure. interrupt, but we often hear that businesses, the, the Mortality rate for new businesses, for startups, is like 50% or greater yep. in the first yep. year or so. Are you seeing that, or, or do, with this level of, of scrutiny that, that many uh, entrepreneurs have to go through with their potential lenders, uh, is the foundation being laid better for more likelihood of success? I think it is being laid better. In some of these workshops that we have, an entrepreneur might come in and, and bluntly leave and say, Carlos, I don't really have what it takes to be an entrepreneur, so I'm not going to continue in your class. I'm just going to go back to, to my job. I found out that this isn't for me. So teaching these courses is also helping, but it might help them make a decision that they really have to at some point uh, try it. If, if it doesn't work for them, that's fine. There's nothing lost in, in that attempt. And the hottest startup right now would be what, would you say? Industry-wise? Yes. Yeah. Um, a lot of food industry. Mm -hmm. A lot of food industry and restaurants are popping up. Again, part of it is because of the ethnic cuisine and the popularity of ethnic cuisine. Can't argue with that. Can't argue with the clock either. I have to leave it there. Thanks for coming back. You know, My always pleasure as always. It. Thank you.